All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Peter Renner back with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging, which you can check out over on comicbookinvest.com, as well as my YouTube channel, and over on Tales from the Flip Side. Please read the article, because I put stuff in there that I'm not putting in the video, and uh, check this out on Flip Side, as well as check it out on my personal channel, where you'll, you can catch a little uh, mid-credit scene, usually, that I like to sneak in at the end, just for a little bit extra, so if you want to check it out over there. Uh, regardless, please like and subscribe to my channel, to Tales, and again, bookmark comicbookinvest.com because uh, that's your place where you're going to get a ton of great articles, not just by me, uh, but by all the fellows over there. Uh, shout out to Tover with True First because one of my picks definitely ties into something that he dropped for us a few months ago, but I just want to remind us of that. So to get back to uh, what I've been doing, uh, the last couple of weeks I've been looking at the Marvel uh, Disney Plus shows. Uh, two weeks ago I started prepping for WandaVision, which is hitting this weekend. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Can't, you know, can't wait to check it out. And uh, I just dropped a few books that I think you should keep an eye out for in those uh, cheap bins. Uh, and then last week I did uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier because that show is dropping next, I think, in March. Which will take us to the next show, which I think is coming in May, right after the Black Widow movie. So, if you want to see what it is, stick around. All right, so... What are we doing this week? This week we are doing Loki. That's right. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I, even though Loki is no longer in the MCU proper after what Thanos did to him, there is a version that did make it out thanks to some uh, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly uh, shenanigans that the crew did in uh, Endgame there. So we do have a Loki, thankfully, and we do get an interesting show pulling out of that. So with all that timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbliness, uh, we got to look at the Time Variance Authority. Now, I know this book is not a book you're going to find in uh, the dollar bins. People have known about this now for a couple of months, and this is already shot up in value. I mean, yes, keep an eye out for it, but I'm not saying you're going to find uh, Thor 372 in those uh, cheap boxes for much longer, if you can. Uh, again, a lot of people have been clearing it out uh, for the last couple of months. So, But it's still something you should be aware of, because uh, I think that's the first uh, full appearance of the Time Variance Authority, as well as, lately, another hot book. is this Fantastic Four 353, because everybody's jumping on this, uh, you know, Mr. Mobius uh, character, and uh, his first full, I guess you would say, is in this book. You can see he's right there on the uh, bottom cover there in the, in the little box. And uh, inside, yes, it, it is a clear, uh, you know, full, full-on appearance, you know. He, he's speaking, he's, you know, he's a main character, and uh, he obviously he can tell, he can see him, that he looks just like Owen Wilson's character uh, there on the show. So this should be interesting. Uh, to see. I, I enjoy Owen Wilson uh, when cast in the right role. And I think he can do a good job with this. So, with that, I think you got to keep an eye out for those books. But the one I think is getting forgotten about, and Topher even mentioned this in his True First article, you know, a while back, is that while well, Fantastic Four 353 shows that, you know, that full, full appearance, he does show up in 352. So, I don't know why this book is still like a dollar or two. I, I just bought one you know, online for two bucks uh, just this past week just because it, it's so cheap. But uh, if you look, I mean, this character here in the what is basically the Time Variance Authority is, you can see him. Like, he's in the suit. He's got the mustache. That's obviously Mobius. Like, so he appears. I mean, you could say it's a cameo, and that's fine. And I'm not saying this is, you know, the book you need to get. I'm just saying just pay attention, and it might be worth picking up because I think it should be more than two bucks if the other book is selling you know, for uh, so much more. But I don't know, just something you should consider. That's all. Just don't want you to forget about it. Just to be informed, know what books to look for. So put all of these you know, on your radar. So when you're digging in those bins, because there's not a lot of good Fantastic Four books to be pulling out of the boxes. And on that note, Tover did remind me that we should mention this Fantastic Four annual that also hits back into the Time Variance Authority. And there's a lot of first appearances in this annual for some of the uh, characters, uh, justices, I think they are. So it's just something you might want to look for. I don't know if there's anything that's going to tie directly into the show or hit up at any point in time, but it's still worth looking at because, I mean, a Fantastic Four annual number 27, I mean, who's been paying attention to that, right? So keep an eye out for it. 
All right, so with our next pick, uh, we're going to go look at the uh, female version of Loki. Uh, I'm not for certain that this is going to be in the show, but we, we can see that there are multiple Lokis being shown in some form. A lot of time travel, a lot of weirdness going on here. I don't know if it's going to be like a multiverse, you know, kind of thing going on or what, but there is a chance at the very least that we might get a female version of uh, Loki on this show. So it is worth paying attention to. So with that said, uh, I know I mentioned before months ago on Dollar Bin Digging to look for that, you know, first you know, female uh, version of Loki and that's Thor 5. Uh, there's two covers. There's the regular, which is pretty cool. And then, and then there's that uh, Michael Turner cover that is also really awesome. So if you can find them, obviously grab them. But again, this is a while ago. People spec so far out on Marvel that it's kind of hard to find uh, new gems to find for uh, for cheap because people are just specking so far in advance that th these are books that have, they, they might have already done this, like, you know, the cycle. They were hot and now they're back in the bins again. Who knows? But just keep them on your radar just in case you're flipping past those, those Thor books to keep an eye out for these because yes in this book it's uh it's loki and the female version he basically i think he takes over in his reincarnation uh sifts the body meant for sif and uh kind of takes control of that and uh is, becomes like a female version of loki in this uh so to that end I, I, will we see her on the show i don't know but they did cast a character uh this actress this uh sophia di martino and who oh, no, knows? They didn't say who she's playing, but she, could she be a female Loki? I mean, it's possible. If you kind of look her look with the eyes and just the fa facial structure is a bit, you can kind of see almost like a uh, a little bit of Tom Hiddleston in there. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm not saying they look alike, but I don't know if you remember that Seinfeld episode where Jerry was dating, or no, George was dating the girl who kind of looked like Jerry, and then, then once you saw it, you couldn't unsee it. Oh, what do you know about what you look like? <laughs> Maybe we do look a little like each other. So once I looked at these two together, now I can't unsee it and they kind of look together. But anyway, just something to you know, keep an eye on. Again, we don't know if that's who she's going to be. It might not be a female. Oak. She might be another character altogether. But it is curious, this set photo that they showed where it kind of has at least that, you know, kind of Loki kind of quality with the gold. And it looks like there's a touch of green in there. I mean, could be any other Asgardian. There's plenty of other uh, Asgardians that she could be playing. Uh, and maybe not even an Asgardian. Who knows? She could be anybody, but just an idea to keep in mind that it could be you know, a female Loki. And to that end, another thing that you want to think about with uh, the female Loki aspect is that, you know, that character had a, uh, had a run for a while where Loki was basically, uh, you know, I think he, in uh, Mighty Avengers, there was a Mighty Avengers run where he uh, basically swapped in for Wanda. And uh, I don't know if they're going to tie anything like that into these shows in any way, but you, you never know. You never know what they might do. But if you look at Mighty Avengers 2023, 20, I think it is, uh, you can see that, uh, yeah, there's the female Loki. She goes in, and by the end of the issue, she's basically, you know, hidden herself in the form of, you know, the Scarlet Witch and kind of is manipulating the, uh, the Avengers team through, you know, through using Wanda's, you know, body or her look at least. There's an awesome Koi Fam cover, Koi Fam cover on issue 24. Um, so you just want to take a look at that too. And that kind of continues the story. You can see again, yeah, it's Loki, you know, still posing as Scarlet Witch. But the one that I think that uh, you kind of want to look out for here, because uh, as cool as that is and the cool as the interiors are and that, uh, that awesome cover, I also really like this Mighty Avengers 29 cover. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it. It's just cool kind of painterly look. I think it's a... Uh, uh, Dejertovic. I don't know if I'm saying his name properly, but uh, I think that's who did the cover on this one, and, it, and it's it's a gorgeous cover. So if you can find this for a buck, I get it just for the cover alone. And there's nothing really super significant outside of that. It's just I'm looking for the female Loki books that you might find for a buck, and uh, this is one that you probably can uh, scoop out of those cheap bins because there's not a lot of people buying it for it. I did find it kind of interesting inside that uh, the, through a kiss between uh, basically Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch, who ends up being Loki, that's how we found out that you're not you're not Wanda, because apparently, you know, he knows how she kisses, and that's not how uh, Loki did it, I guess. So, I don't know. I just found it fun. That would be a fun scene for them to do in live action, but again, it's mostly for that cover is why I picked it for a, you know, for a book that you should keep an eye out for this week. So, we're going to move on. And moving on with our next pick, we're going to go rolling into... The Dark Reign Young Avengers. Now, 
again, this one has been one that uh, has been mentioned before. People have specced on it a bit. I, you can find a lot of copies online, you know, in that 10 to 15 kind of dollar range. So it's still kind of on the lower end, and it's still a book that you can probably still find in those dollar bins because a lot of these extra, you know, tie-ins to uh, to larger Marvel events, this Dark Rain thing where they did little minis kind of growing out of it, those things, just a lot of people, they had a lot of extras. Like shops usually have a lot of extras, and that's kind of stuff that just winds up in the uh, the dollar bins for cheap because nobody's really looking out for it. And uh, the reason for this pick is because uh, the second Enchantress actually first appears in this. It's a uh, Sylvie, I want to say Sylvie Lufton. I don't know if I'm saying her name properly, but uh, the second Enchantress is the reason why this book is it's her first appearance, and it's one you should keep an eye out for. Uh, I mean. Can see she looks like the enchantress now the tricky part about speculating on this is that we see that there's an actress cast as young sylvie which leading some to believe that this sylvia sylvie character might be enchantress too might be in the show but the character is very very young uh she actually played judith on walking dead she played ray in um the force awakens as the, you know the tiny ray like this is a very young actress so this is just mostly Probably going to be a flashback. I mean, maybe there'll be a grown-up version also on the show. I don't know. But uh, it's the name because I think it's been... I don't know if it's been confirmed, but it's been basically reported in a lot of places that young Sylvie is the character that uh, that this young girl's playing. I don't know how they would handle that, but it's just something to keep an eye on. Uh, and this, this idea of a younger character, maybe we're going to get the young Loki. Uh, and uh, maybe it'll be kind of a flashback where we see this young sylvie character and uh you know maybe uh she'll take the place of a character leah uh who i'm gonna maybe touch upon at some point uh and talked about before maybe they'll do sort of some sort of swap i don't know who knows what their what their plans are but if we get a young loki then then you're looking for that uh you know first kid loki book as well but again you're not finding that for cheap usually because like that's long long been uh pointed out and long been specced upon it's an expensive book already but that said Keep an eye out for this Dark dark Rain Young Avengers number one because it, it's worth it. It's worth a shot if you can find it for a buck because if she does show up on the show, even if it's not this series, maybe there's a follow-up series, and I think this might have been renewed for a second series already, that's a character we may see coming around, uh, you know, that second time. So just something to keep in your pocket, something to put in that mental Rolodex, so when you're flipping through the boxes, uh, you know to keep an eye out for that one. So that'll take us to our last pick. Okay, so for our last pick, I'm going to stick with this en Enchantress idea and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, play off that possibility that maybe the Sophia DiMartino is an older version of this young Sylvie character and maybe, you know, she's just a grown-up version of that Enchantress. It's a possibility. But what's also a possibility is that maybe the two aren't connected at all, but maybe we do get an Enchantress. Maybe we do Maybe they're going to save young Sylvie for a future installment, a second Enchantress, but maybe we get the OG, the original Enchantress in this series. I don't know. It's possible. Now, the first appearance-wise, you're not going to find a Journey into Mystery 103 in the dollar box. You're just not. So, I mean, if you do, you know, bravo, you know, good on you. But uh, I'm not saying that you're going to. So, putting that aside, when you have a character as old, or not as old, but has been around as long as she has, uh, you're not going to find that first appearance in the cheap bin. So you're going to have to, you know, think think a little bit outside the box of what else people might be looking for that relates to that character. And uh, one book that I really like is this Son of Asgard Thor number eight. It just has a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I mean, it's just, check it out. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's worth the price of admission alone, especially for a dollar. So I don't know. There's not a lot of great Enchantress covers that I can think of off the top of my head, but this is definitely one of them. And if you find it for a buck, I recommend you just grabbing it just for that. So that's why I picked it for, you know, for this last pick. But that's bringing up Enchantress, like coming with that idea, who could play her like in this movie? Now there's a lot of actors and actresses cast in this and we don't know for certain who they're playing. So it's all left for us to speculate, you know? So it's possible that we could be seeing somebody like maybe this, uh, maybe I'm going to try not to butcher her name, but, Gugu Mbatu Raw, maybe she's playing Enchantress. I don't know. She's got the look, look enough for it. I mean, she's gorgeous, so it's a possibility to me that she could be playing that character in this because she's playing somebody, and they haven't announced who she is. But just kind of throwing that out there. Uh, I don't know. 
it, it, it's it's definitely a character I think she could fit doing. So just something to keep in mind. Maybe she plays it because I there's lots of rumors there's a version of Enchantress in here somehow. So maybe that's the way they decide to go. I don't know. But that said, keep an eye out for that Son of Asgard, uh, Son of Asgard number eight because it's just a gorgeous cover. Like I said, definitely, definitely pick it up for a dollar if you can find it, or you know, two bucks if you can't find it in dollar bins and your shop does the two dollar boxes. Because I'm seeing a lot more of those uh, these days. But again, looking forward to this series. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. I mean, you, you just look at that the last trailer that we got. I mean, you got the implication that Loki could have been DB Cooper. I mean. That's just kind of cool to me. Like you have you work in the Marvel history with real life history of this, you know, this guy who just disappeared out of the thin air and they can explain it away with a Bifrost, you know, bride Bifrost jump. It it's just kind of fun. It's just a fun little tidbit, uh, a fun little thing that they can do. And uh, I don't know. Again, I'm just looking forward to the series. You, you got you know some timey wimey stuff. You got the time variance authority. It's it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Uh, who knows where they're going to go with this, but I think it's laying the groundwork for a lot of the other things that they may be planning uh, going forward. And when you start talking about time, how can you not bring up Kang the Conqueror? And Kang is one of my favorite villains because of the old Secret Wars toy from back in the day, because I've joked about it before, like, because I like the Zemo Secret Wars, but Kang was the other one, because again, I guess I like purple. Purple is a perfect bad guy color. I don't know what to tell you. It, it's been used by the Joker and, and plenty of others for a reason. It's just an awesome color. It, it's a good look. And I think Kang is a possibility. And I don't know, the blue face and the, you know, the green outfit with the purple, purple and green. That's definitely bad guy color. Definitely bad guy color. And this, uh, the fan art that I, I've seen for uh, you know, the actor that they've uh, hired to play him it is really cool. I can see it. I can't wait to see it. Uh, I know there's talk that he might be uh, the villain in the uh, next Ant-Man movie, but there's no reason why they might not drop hints or you know, lay the groundwork here, possibly in these uh, Disney Plus shows, because, hey, it's all controlled by the same place. They could do whatever the hell they want. So just something to keep in mind. So Thanks for checking this, checking out this video. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this. Again, please like and subscribe to my channel as well as Tales from the Flip Side. And uh, if you're watching this on my channel, please stick around for the uh, mid credit scene. I'm going to stop telling you about it. I'm just going to keep doing it. But I'm going to stop telling you about it because otherwise it's not as fun if it's not a secret. So see you guys later.